Welcome to this week's edition of Courtside. I'm your host, John Brown, with the head coach, Chris Stalley. Springford got a much-needed 3-0 week. Coach, we talked about it last week on the show. It was a big week for you guys here, and you came through with some really big wins uh, going 3-0 this past week. Yeah, good morning, Coach. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a nice nice change to go 3-0. I feel like we've been going 2-1 and or 3-1. Uh, to go three and zero was was nice. And really, let's we're, the first game we're going to start talking about. Owen J. Roberts was a yeah. game. You, boy, we talked about it was going to be a battle, and you really needed a big fourth quarter to get that W against Owen J. Yeah, it was it was almost a carbon copy of the game when we played at Owen J. Uh, we had a real big lead, jumped out on them early, and they slowly chipped away and and um, made some nice adjustments from Coach Kirby and staff, and it turned into a dogfight. And, um, at one point in the fourth quarter, they had the lead, so it was it was nice for our guys to bounce back and, and close it out. Um, we talked about we're getting some other contributions, getting other guys. I mean, like once again here, <clears throat> the people know the, the Noah yeah. Baker and, and Bobek, but it's nice you're seeing some other guys make some contributions for you here coming down the stretch. Though. Yeah, uh, you know Patrick Kovaleski's come along lately. He uh, he's been solid on both ends. Schlingo's been quietly knocking shots down from yep. everywhere. Hagen. Uh, playing a real nice floor game. Trey Medeiros, you know, he affects the game. It's nice to, to have him back and in the flow and, and active. And, uh, yeah, like you said, everybody knows Baker Bobek, but it, it's kind of been a, a, a team effort as of late. And really, here, this is the home stretch of the yeah. season. You only got the two, two uh, regular season games left before there's some postseason basketball. Talk a lot before we start showing some highlights here. Is there like a, at this point, barring foul trouble rotation or is it still kind of like you know this ain't working I'm going to try this thing talk about you as a coach a little bit like what your mindset is and who's getting in the game when's get you know that sort of thing yeah a lot of it is predicated on matchups uh you know sometimes if teams throw five guards out there you know it's tough for us to play Baker Bobek and Medeiros at once um but it's also tough for them to to play that way as well so it kind of just depends on the situation of the game. Do we got to get up and press? Uh, um, so we do have a rotation that we kind of like right now. Mm -hmm. But also, like you said, some, as soon as someone picks up two quick fouls, that game plan's out, out the window. Yeah, I feel like you're, you're a coach. When you get in a flow, you just go with it. You know, yeah. if they're out there for five, six minutes and you got a good flow, you're, you're going to go with those kids, yeah. right? Uh, until, until it stops working, we're not going to. Uh, disrupt that because, you know, why would you? They're, yeah. they're high school athletes. They're in the best shapes of their lives right now. So, uh, yeah, if they're rolling, we're kind of, you know, and, and there's times where, you know, we might have two starters down. And yeah. if it's rolling, we're, we're going to go with it. All right, Coach, good stuff there. Let's check out the highlights from Springford, Owen J. Roberts. Yeah, this is a, a home game for us, and you can see pressure affected them early. And to uh, Coach Kirby's credit, they made some adjustments to kind of get us out of that, but it got us a great lead. Got you out going, right? Yeah, and, and we're, we're better offensively when our defense is going. Uh, you can see we have three guys on the ball there, and it kind of worked out for us, but um, I'd like to see a little better pass from Schlingo. Alec going out there. But the, uh, the trap was good. and Running the floor. Yep, Banani getting to his spot. There's Kovalescu, who we talked about earlier. He's uh, he's starting to get into the flow of things. We gotta get the student body out. I mean, that's what they're like. There's like 15 kids there, coach. Yeah. Student bodies. It's it's go time here, guys. It is. You know what else you got to do in the middle of winter on a you know a week night? Yeah, right. Get home. Get some homework done. Get some dinner. And you get get out here to the game, guys. Come yeah. on, kids. The Rams are playing some pretty good basketball. There's uh, nice stuff right there. Like I said, there's Medeiros. You know, he's a huge wild card coming down the stretch run here looks like they're playing like a little extended two three zone too yeah trying they, to trap out of it they they did a nice job switching up in that second half uh and then here's baker doing what he does best um you can see a lot of these clips were in transition nice and that's uh that's I like what that we pass want. right there yeah Hagen. like i said he's been a, a great floor general that's for deep us. three ball right there yeah he uh he, he makes that with consistency okay. he, that he, you know even if he misses two or three of them you know we're we're happy when he takes that fourth one so when he's pulling the trigger from two three steps beyond the arc and there's no 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 or no, we're good with it you're good with it we're good with all it. right with like him it. We're with good him with it. yeah okay others get those toes near the line we're good with it with schlingo right now okay all right yeah. sounds good 
All right, so then second game here. Yeah. Um, we talked about it last week being a Friday game with Upper Marion, and uh, you played it a day early. Yeah, it was, uh, to use a basketball analogy, maybe a pump fake. Okay. Um, a little mixed up in communication from, uh, you know, everybody involved. I don't think any single person's at fault. I, you know, ultimately, I'll, I'll take responsibility if, yeah. if anything. But, uh, yeah, we played Thursday. Uh, so you played Tuesday. Yeah. We think you have two days to get ready. Had a really hard practice Wednesday because of that right. same mindset. And then, you know, Thursday afternoon, right, right around, you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, we uh, were notified via social media that we had a game. Scram scramble mode into. Yeah. So we, you know, sent some emails, sent some texts, and uh, made it happen. And... We talked about this. First time you'd been to Upper yeah. Marion as used coach. I mean, I, yeah. we never played Upper Marion when Coach Young called what, and I don't think. No. I don't know when was the last time we were at Upper Marion. We'd have to look in the in the record books. Tom Saylor would know he that would answer. Know that up there. Um, and they're a fight for, they're trying to win that division over there, yeah. too. So you knew it was going to be a battle down there, too. Yeah, that, that side is, I, don't, I can't even tell you who's Log where. Jam. But uh, that was a huge game for them, knowing if, if they got us, you know, that puts them in the driver's seat. But, uh, you know, without preparing, without having a practice to, to game plan for them, our, our kids played really well. Yeah, sometimes you just throw the ball out and go play basketball a little bit, that's too, it. you know? Yeah. And that's what you guys did. Let's check out the highlights, all right? You got it. Springford Upper Marion. Here we go. Yeah, so this is the first time Upper Marion's on courtside here. Uh, you can see it's a smaller gym, but, uh, you know, they, they were ready to play. Nice ball fake from Hagen. Leaves them wide open. Yep. Could be spreading the floor a little bit better there, but another pump fake from Hagen again. It's a nice pull up. Bobek with the rebound, kick out, three ball. Schlingo, right? Yep. But uh, Bobek, kept, you know, he kept that play. Right, alive. you can just see the size. You're just watching the film here, too. Yeah. There's the spat and spin. Yep. Baker and Bobek kind of did whatever they wanted. And, uh, there's see. that Medeiros causing that disruption at the top of the press for you. Yeah, I'd like for him to catch it with two hands because yeah. then he'd have himself That's a layup right there, a yeah. dunk for Medeiros. Jump but, straight up and dunk it? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yep. His ankle injury, you know, kind of had him hidden for a little bit, but he, he's back and ready there you to are go. Going the, so you big talk here is get to the offensive glass here. Just shoot until you make it, basically. Yeah. Um, and Baker, I can't say enough about the way he's played lately. Um, you know, he could probably get 20 a night, but he's been... He's been a really good facilitator for you this year. He really year. has been. You think sometimes when you become a senior, you know, you're, you want the limelight, get the points, but, boy, he's been, the, he's been a real opposite that for you. I mean, don't get me wrong, he can still score, but, yeah. boy, just finding people in the basketball court. What, a little kick ball there? Yeah, I think that's the More, highlight. Ooh. There's the highlight that we were looking for. There's the lob play. Yeah, but back to your point, he, uh, he got Fitzgerald a wide-open three. Yeah. And, you know, he... Good, good break there, and that's Kovaleski and Medeiros, two juniors, running the blip, break nicely, ball didn't touch the floor. But not to, not to go back to Baker, um, we talked about facilitating. He defensively, rebounding, he's just been um, a, a pleasure to coach this year. He, he's kind of taken this team and under his wings and taking a leadership role, and I think some good things are to come for Noah Baker. All right, um, good stuff. So then we got one more. Your favorite seems to be this year, the Saturday afternoon game. I know it wasn't here, but yeah. boy, the Rams on Saturday afternoon, we got to look at the stats. You guys have been phenomenal on Saturday afternoons, right? Yeah, especially I feel like on the road, uh, a lot of Saturday maybe. Well, let's think about it. You beat Hemfield on a Saturday afternoon, right? Yeah, I was home. You beat um, Potsgrove here on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, another home game. Uh, there has been another... But the Saturday, you the lost Saturday. the Saturday night, yeah. the PV early. So the Saturday afternoon is really that, the key aspect. Yeah, that's, that, that's good. we got to put that in our Sabre metrics and look at that a little bit. Okay, uh, so Upper Darby, Central League team. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you said struggling a little bit at, this year, and you guys come, once went down there took care of business. Struggling, maybe record-wise, but if you look at their box scores and their games and talking to their coach, you know, they – he was really confident with their team, you know, losing a lot of games by three points, four points. And, uh, you know, his message was, we just want to get into districts and not play Abington. He's like, we'll play anybody but Abington. But Abington. And uh, he was pretty confident in that. Where, so. where are they at right about now? Abington? No, 
uh, <clears throat> Upper Darby? Uh, well, I don't want to spoil it because we want to see the highlights, but they were right on the bubble until we played them. Okay. So they needed to beat us to, to kind of... Big bonus points then huge, for them, too. Yeah. Uh, but we won. We did. We won. In convincing fashion. I think from start to finish, this was our, our best game of the season. Saturday afternoons. Yeah, on, I, on the road. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. I, I, I'm, I'm really, sticking with it. No, because the, yeah. the ones against Grove and yeah. Hemfield were home, right? Right. I'm just saying Saturday afternoons in general. Yeah, on the road. We're You're, pretty good. Okay. Sat, all right, here we go. Check the highlights. Check the highlights. Yeah, first time. That's a lot of space <laughs> underneath the basket there. Yeah, if you've been to Sheltonham. Yes, correct. And it's very similar to that layout. And it was freezing cold. Really? So Saturday afternoon, no... Uh, Depth perception, freezing cold. We thought, you know, that could have been a recipe for a, an upset. But Kovaleski with a nice three there. Um, you can see Medeiros again wreaking ha havoc. In this press, yeah. Yeah, which is uh, huge for us going down the stretch. There's another one. Um, like I said, he's, he's the X factor right now. And uh, I think that's Scrocky going baseline or Schlingo. Three. Baker. Yep. Climbing towards the thousand there, coach. Close. Yeah. And we, uh, second half, we had the. Ooh. Is that Medeiros? Yeah, block of the three. Yep. There, Scrocky gets an and one. I don't think they showed the foul shot there, but, you know, the young sophomore getting huge minutes. Pull up three, offensive glass. Baker. Right. So this is, uh, Hagen with an and one. And, uh, we had the luxury of just kind of sitting back in the zone that second half and working on our zone defense a little bit, which... Are you thinking of, you know, when you're pressing, are you thinking about, is it back the man, is it back the zone, is it, it can just, it can change. So you don't want to give, yeah. I mean, you don't want to give too much stuff away, but you, you feel comfortable going back into both. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, it's not, teams get access to all of our games pretty much by anybody, so... You know, I'm not really giving any secrets away. Sometimes we go back to man. Sometimes we go back to zone. Sometimes, uh, you know, we get turnovers and don't need to do either. Yeah, sounds good, Kish. Yeah. All right, hey, big first segment right there. Yeah. Uh, going to be a quicker show. we got only one more segment here. We're going to talk a little bit about pack playoffs, some districts, and uh, your last week opponents. Is yeah, that? you got it. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll preview the games with Upper Park and PV. So, I'm kind of new here but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise. And be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Welcome back to Courtside. I'm your host, John Brown, with the head, head coach, Chris Talley. All right, coach here. Uh, games this week. We yeah. got Upper Park and PV. Packed playoffs. Boy, it's, it's a log jam. Still trying to figure things out. But the way I see it and reading things, if yeah. you beat Upper Park, you're in some way, shape, or manner. Does that, yeah. does that sound right? Yeah, that, that, that's accurate. Okay. Yeah, we, got, we got to beat Upper Park. And, and then you're in. Yeah. And you're in that first, you're going to somewhere fall in that three to six range. You're going to play that opening night. That, we, we did receive the bylaws. And okay. I think if you ask all the coaches that from both sides that are jockeying for position, it, it's pretty tough to figure out. The way I interpret it, and by me, Coach Puffco and Coach Reber mm -hmm. doing all that, um, it looks like we're kind of locked in at the sixth seed. You're going to, okay. Regardless of you know, what the other teams do. I think if we beat Upper Perk, we're kind of locked in at the sixth seed. All right, so we're going to make the playoffs, yeah. play the three seed. Yeah. So let's just go through it right now. 
it probably looks like four schools from the big school side are getting in. Norristown, Methacton, PV, Springfield. Sounds right? Yeah. Norristown is still the, in the driver's seat for that first round bye? Yeah, I think uh, ultimately it'll come down with those three teams to PowerPoints. Oh, because they all have the same amount of league losses right now. Right now, correct. Okay, so if somebody would stumble, that would drop them down. But if they all finish out the same record in the league, yeah. whoever has the best district ranking gets that bye. Correct. Okay, and then the other ties are broken if the other two teams buy their district rankings too. Yes. That sound right? Yes. And then on the other side, Ooh. automatic berth, and we got teams like Upper Marion, PJP, Pottsgrove, Phoenixville, all battling it yeah. out, right? Pottstown might even be in that equation, but yeah. Yeah, I think, I think Pope John Paul may have a game ahead of those guys, okay. but also have to play PV. Okay. So you feel, you know, not, you know, if history indicates it, I think all the big schools in the playoffs have beaten Pope John Paul. So okay. we'll see. Um, so whoever wins that division is the two seed then too, yeah. right? Yeah. And whoever else makes it in, you're saying he's going to get ahead of us and probably be like the five. Is, is that what it sounds like to you? Yeah, they'll, they'll get, even though they have a, a, a worse record, just the way the bylaws are set up. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think. I, well, maybe we'll get the bylaws. We'll put it up there. Maybe we'll get some interpretation. But it doesn't matter. By next week's show, it's all going to be set in anyway. I, I have the bylaws. I'll send them to you. Anything over a paragraph is, is too much for me. And you're I, done with and it. And I just forward it along. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, so we gave everybody a little preview, but we're playing. We're, we're win, win against Upper yeah. Perkin. We're playing playoff we're basketball. Yep. And districts were somewhere like 13-ish, 13, 13 something like that. Like I said, that, that changes, you know. As, Daily. You know, hourly because coaches aren't as diligent as others and forget to put it in. And, um, you know, all of a sudden a team will put three games in a row and then, you know, there's a lot of jockeying. So, yeah. Right so, now we're at 13. Okay, so everybody you're for your schedules, first round packed playoffs here at Springford, yeah. and it's Wednesday the, what's the date? Let's do this. So, One, two, three, Monday's the 4th. 6th? Yeah. Wednesday the 6th. Yeah. Here, first round of packed playoffs. Yes. Boys. Boys. Girls the follow night. On Thursday, yes. Okay, and then first round of districts, February 15th, that yeah. Friday, that, that like Friday a day in service day. Yep. Okay, so you got... All the way from now, if you, whatever, that would be a big break in the schedule if you lose that first round of that yeah, let, pack game. let's hope not. I think You want to play more the, basketball. The kids, I think, have been accustomed to playing in that championship game. Okay. I think we've been in it four out of five years or something. Yeah. So I think we want, we we want, want to get back that there. pattern and, you know, playoff, playoff district. Gotcha. That's, that's where we want to be. All right. So first up this week, Upper Perk. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're the bottom of the other half of the division. You haven't been home. You know, it should be yeah, take but, care of business. But they, you know, they play teams tough. They play as hard as anybody in the league. They, you know, PV had a, a dog fight with them, ended up winning by six or seven. Okay. And, you know, talking to their coach a little bit, he's like, you know, they, they play hard. They made shots. And, you know, they beat Phoenixville this year. They, they played teams tough. So I, I hope our mindset isn't we're going to roll the balls out and win. Like, okay. We're going to have to earn this one. Uh, and then, obviously, you're going to cap the season with the big yeah. rivalry. Yeah. Uh, PV's coming here first day in February, Friday the... S Second, I think, maybe? Friday the 1st. Yeah. Friday the 1st. Friday night. Friday night action here. So you're okay with it. It's not a Saturday night yeah. game. Uh, PV's been playing some really good basketball. Yeah. Stretch has got his 1,000. They're yeah. rolling. They had a big win versus... Uh, Norristown at Norristown, right? Am I correct in that assessment out there? And then lost a nail-biter to Methacton, so... They're playing the best teams in the league really tough. Yeah, they, I mean, there's, you know, they're top eight seed in District 1 right now, and, you know, they kind of control their own destiny. A, a win against us, you know, really sets them up nicely for, for district play, and you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. It, it starts with Strecha. He, uh, if he's not the best player in the league, he's the top, in the top two. He's certainly in that conversation. Um, so, you know, we're certainly going to have our hands full. When you play Coach, Coach Bison's team, when yeah. I, at, what's something you always stress? What's something you, you know that they're going to do, you, you have to be prepared for as the Rams? Yeah, they, uh, defensively, they're good. You know, they kind of pack it in, force you to, you know, make outside shots, and, and they like to control the tempo. So to, 
to play PV and, and to beat PV, you got to jump on them a little bit and get a lead and, and have them play from behind. But more importantly, you got to make some shots because you know everything will be contested and, and they're tough kids. That's a big one for you guys, eh? Because it could lead to some momentum yeah. heading into the playoffs yeah. and major bonus points yeah. for, for some district rankings because that's your last opportunity to earn district points right. on your own that right. Friday night. They ha I think they have 14, 15 wins at this point. So if you can get a win there, that, that can jump you up two, three spots. And then, you know, a lot of those Suburban 1 and Chessmont uh, teams have a lot more games to play. They're playing so that whole next week then too, yeah. yeah. So you'll, you know, you'll, you'll be set, but, um, you know, 15 wins is, would be nice to get. I would say barring disaster, we should probably finish in that, what you would think, like 13 to 16 yeah. range, get at least a first round home game. Yeah, that's the goal. We want to we wanna have a home game um, in district play. The double buy, you know, we talked a lot about the double buy, yeah. the, the top eight's out of it. But once again, you find a way to win a couple of those games early in the season, you, yeah. you could be in that conversation too. Yeah, I mean... You know, every, every team goes through adversity. What it could have, should have, right? Yeah. But, so there's no use. But um, all we're concerned with is playing, you know, it's coach speak, playing your best basketball at this time of year. And Coach Kurtz and I talked about it at the beginning of the year. This is the type of team where we really feel like as the year goes on, we're going to get better. And, you know, it, it's kind of come to fruition right now. And we've Played pretty well, so we'll see. All right, Coach, good stuff right there. Good show, good quick yeah. show here today. Absolutely. All right, make sure you tune in next week as we recap the games with Upper Park and PV and preview the pack playoffs. For the head coach, Chris Talley, I'm John Brennan. See you next time, courtside.